Okay, here we are, YouTube world and students of EO3. And of course, anyone else out there, out in that giant ocean pond. <laughs> what we're going to cover today is uh, we're going to do stretch, we're going to do scale, mirror, rotate, and then I don't, depending how long that takes, we'll probably go into fillets and chamfers, um, and then maybe even array. Oh, we got to do offset, dude. Offset, come on, we got to do offset. So we're going to go through a bunch of these modified tools, okay? Um, so the first thing is that, you know, watch the other videos, okay? We got video one, video two. I'm um, talking about how to draw, in the, you know, with the three coordinate systems, um, how to do, like, you know, basic lines, polylines, circles, and rectangles. I didn't even really cover that, but all you really need to know is that, you know, you're either telling it the radius or you're telling it the diameter. And, of course, when you start those tools, that it's just going to ask you what your starting point. So if you're going to start at, you know, 5, comma 5 or something like that, you can tell it what radius at that point. Um, even when you're in the radius tool, you can actually still say, hey, you know, we got a lot of hyperlinks down here always, so always look for those. But hey, I want to do diameter or whatever, um, which is kind of funny because when you're in diameter, uh, you can't tell that you want to do radius. So I don't really understand that. It's always been like that, but uh, that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so um, let's start off by making another 10 by 7 box. So I'm going to use the uh, rectangle tool, and I'm going to start at 0, comma 0, which is down in the lower left corner for me. Let me just check on my screen, make sure it's going here. All right, we're good. Um, and then we're going to do just 10, 7. Okay, so we got this. We're going to just call this our little work area here. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to draw a, a circle, okay? And we're going to do circle. Uh, we're going to do circle radius. And we're going to go at the point 1, 3. Okay, I'm making this stuff up, so it's not, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just trying to get it to fit, you know, with everything that I want to do. Um, then I just want you to say basically, okay, what's the radius? You're just going to make it 0.5. All right, so we got a circle like that. Okay, I want you to take a line, and I want you to draw it from the end point here to the end point here. Okay, so I want to make an X in the middle. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to take that circle. I want to move it. So it's going to say, what's the base point? I'm going to grab it at the center of the circle. And remember, if you're not seeing that, that is an O, S, enter. So we've said that in the three videos so far. Uh, basically what that does is it brings up a window like this and you just check the things that you uh, want it to show. So for me, I, I usually have on tangent, I have on endpoint, midpoint, center, and intersection right there. Okay, um, Okay. so take this, move, grab it from the center of the circle, and put it at the X. What the, what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to, excuse me, we are going to scale this. Okay, so go to scale, select what you want to scale, and hit enter. And then at the midpoint, click your base point. Okay, so it's going to ask you what scale you want. Of course, you can just, you know, draw anything you want with your cursor. But that I tell my students, and I said this in the last video, that anything that's just a random size or random anything is just no, it doesn't mean anything to me. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to do three, which is going to make that three times larger than what it was. Okay. Now I want you to go in and I want you to do um, trim. Okay. So we talked about trim and uh, quick trim, and we talked about old school trim. We talked about extend in the last video. So obviously go back and watch those if you haven't seen them. But you're going to hit another enter, and I want you to trim out all the things around this circle. Okay, so now we got an X in the middle. Then I want you to trim the right side, like this. All right? Kind of looks like Pac-Man, I guess. Um, but don't open the mouth. <laughs> all right? Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Mirror. And I want to mirror these two lines and hit enter. And it's going to ask you, specify the first point of the mirror. Okay, so when you did mirror, it says, what do you want to mirror? I want to mirror these two lines. And then there's always enters between between every different step. So when it's asking something, you got to hit enter once you're done, you know, satisfying that answer. Okay, um, specify the first point. The way mirror works is basically like, if you're going to mirror something over this way, then it wants to know that line straight up and down. And if you're going to mirror something this way, it wants to know the line across. Of course, those are not the only two mirrors. You can mirror things diagonally. So whatever that two points is, whatever angle that's at, is what it's going to mirror at. So I want to mirror this across the vertical plane here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two points up and down on the screen this way. Now, this doesn't matter where you click. As long as you're telling it that along, you know, starting at this point and going straight down, that's the point that it's going to mirror at. If you don't make that your first section there, like this on this plane, and I go, let's just say I was like out here or something, it's going to want to mirror it over that plane depending on where you go. Okay? So just make sure that, you know, that obviously whatever you're mirroring is that you're actually setting the correct 
vertical, horizontal, and the actual starting point and all that stuff. Okay, so I've got my two lines selected. I'm now doing it backwards. Mirror, okay. What's the first point here? What's the second point? It could be anywhere here, 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 here. It doesn't matter as long as it's straight down, okay? Then it's going to ask you a question. Do you want to erase the source? Do you want to get rid of the two lines that you started with? So are you just mirroring it just to make it backwards and get rid of the other stuff, or are you trying to keep both? Uh, and usually I'm, I'm mirroring and then I'm keeping both. So do you want to erase the source? No. Okay, so we've got something that we mirrored. So what we did was we trimmed those two and then we actually just mirrored them back, okay? Um, now what I want to do is I want to rotate these. You'll notice that this is not really in for uh, equal quadrants right now. Because this box is wider than what it was tall, we've got these angles that are not exactly perfect. So not that we're going to change that or anything, but you will notice when we mirror this, I'm sorry, when we rotate this, that it will look different, okay? So we're going to go to rotate. We're going to select these things, we're going to hit enter, and we're going to make this, it's kind of like the center of a clock, it wants to know that point, where is it going to swivel at? So if I were to zoom out, again, that's scrolling out on the mouse, if I want to zoom out a little bit and, I'll, and I click this, it would mirror around that, excuse me, rotate, it would rotate around that point, okay? Um, but I don't want to do that, what I want to do is I want to select these, I want to hit rotate, and I want to rotate it around this point. So now you'll see that I can rotate right around that point that I selected. Okay, I want to make it like this. So I, I do tell my students that if you are if you have F10 on, which is polar, that's that green line, um, you can just go down, you know, you're changing it 90 degrees and click, that's fine. Or you can type 90, or you can type 270, or whatever you want. If you typed 180, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It would just be the same thing, only uh, backwards, which is similar to a mirror. Um, so 90 degrees, enter. Okay, so we get something like that. All right, so very simple. Um, these are very basic tools, and, and I, you know, I hope that nobody's like, what the heck are we making? We're not making anything. We're just making shapes, and we're and we're just talking about the tools. Okay. Um, so next thing I want to do is I want to uh, we did scale. We scaled it three times. But you know what? Let's take this and scale it even higher because I want to scale it smaller after that. So if I do this at the center point here, and it's saying, "Oh, specify your scale factor." The other thing I can do is I can actually make a copy of it uh, before I do it. So if you watch that command down there, I can do um, I can do scale, and I can click my base point. And then, now that's interesting that as soon as you move your cursor, it won't let you get to that. So I don't remember seeing that before, but let's try this. Let's do scale. Let's do the base point. And now don't touch your mouse for a second. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you can't do that. It's interesting because when you're... So let's watch that again. When you go scale, everybody watch down here. Specify the base point. As soon as I click, before it gave me an option for copy... That's interesting. Okay. Well, whatever. Anyways, click it at the center, and then I want you to go to enter. That's going to make it twice as large. Okay. Now do the exact same thing again. Scale. Click in the center. And what I want you to do is just make it smaller now. So that could be 1 over anything. So 1 over 10 would make it 10 times smaller. Okay. So now it's real small. That's pretty much it. That's scale. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's do... Let's see. We did we did these in the in the past. Um, let's do stretch, okay? So we, we ta I talked about this very briefly in the first video, but basically, whatever you're, when you want to do a green box, okay? So when you click and go to the left, whether it's up or down, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you can't do any greens this way, so you'd have to, if you want to do this corner, you'd have to start on the inside, but we're going to do this corner. Um, I want you to click, and I want you to go around the right two corners, okay? And then click again. And it's going to say, oh, you know, are you done selecting objects? Yes, so you hit enter. Then it wants to know the base point. I want you to click either the end, mid, or end point on this. doesn't matter. And then you'll notice that you can stretch this pretty much in any direction. But I want you guys to stretch it this way. And uh, you know what? Let's go this way. And it's going to go 3 inches. Now we have a square, so it's 7 by 7. And then just to make sure that you understand that, let's go back again. Let's do the right side of that. Notice how if I did this and I did stretch, it's just going to move it. So that's no good. If I did this around the circle and I did stretch, and now I stretch this three inches, yeah, we have a 10 by seven box again, but our circle and our little X there moved with it because we were we were encompassing or we were including those into our selection, okay? So be careful when you're doing that. You wanna only get maybe just what you're looking to, to stretch, all right? Um, so stretch is pretty easy. Nothing too groundbreaking there. Uh, we've done rotate, we've done mirror now. You know, why don't we take this and just mirror this again over the midpoint, mid to mid. And then, do you want to erase the source? No. So now we've got two of them. Okay. Um, scale we did. We know how to trim and we know how to extend. Remember, trim, enter would make it a quick trim. Extend, enter would make it a, a quick extend. Okay. Um, we could do array real quick. So there's three kinds of arrays. There's a rectangular array, a path array, and a polar array. 
Think about a polar array like a clock. So if you had the number 12 and you, you know, and you had something at the 12th position and then you went to do a polar array, you can tell it. So here, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go, uh, let's make a little box over here. Let's go just out here anywhere and do at one comma one. So we have a one inch by one inch box, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan this over, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to array and we're gonna do, let's do all three of them using this one by one box, rectangular, okay? So select what you want to rectangularly, is that a word? Rectangularly array, okay? And then hit enter. Now you'll see it's gonna automatically like do this generic array for you, which you probably don't, that's probably not what you want. But I just wanna show you the options of what you can do. How many columns are there? Six, I don't know. How many rows? Four, okay? So you can see those things changing as it goes. Um, you know, what is the spacing between it? Well, you know, I don't know, up and down, or let's say left and right, the spacing is like three inches. That's going to change it dramatically. The spacing up and down is 0.5. That's going to make them a lot tighter. Okay, so if the spacing is less than what the, the shape of your, the size of your actual shape is, then it's not going to obviously leave any space between them. So maybe we'll put that back and we'll make it two. And sometimes it takes a second, and there it goes. Okay. Um, so the big thing here is that when you're done, you just hit close array or you hit enter. All right. Now, something to notice here, this thing here, it still registers itself as an array. So if you wanted to manipulate these separately or you wanted to erase some of them or something like that, you're going to have to use that explode command that I talked about. It sounds so cool, but it really just pulls things apart. So if I go like that and hit enter, it will then separate these into different boxes. Um, if I were to take this one again and explode it, then now this one gets you know taken away from being a polyline and now it's four different line segments I'm gonna hit control Z and bring that back just so I don't have one random rogue box that is uh, exploded alright so we're gonna leave that like that so basically you know what let's just erase all of these except for our starting box again and then we're gonna go back to array and we're gonna do uh, let's do polar array first so let's click on the shape that we want a polar array polar polarly polarly array yeah um, specify the center point of the array so just anywhere over here it really doesn't matter I don't want to go too far because then it's gonna go way off screen but just somewhere over here and then it's gonna go around that point just like a clock like I was saying before so then the things here is how many items are there 12 give it a second okay uh, what's the space in between them so you can change all of these different things you can say oh well I don't want it to do 360 degrees I only want it to do 180 starting at the point that you started at so you could do that too okay and then hit close I'm going to just do the control Z to undo that. And then the next thing is I want to do it along a path. So watch this for a second. When I'm in polyline, I never talked about this before. I'm going to draw from uh, I'm going to draw from this corner and I'm just going to go on an angle like this. You know what? Let's do two lines. Let's go here and then let's it doesn't have to be straight. Don't worry about it, but let's go here. Okay. Now, go over your polyline, right? And click on it, and you'll see that the difference between a line See how it's got three endpoints, three three things that look like endpoints, um, three squares, and this one has two squares and a rectangle in the center. Here's what the, the difference is. On the middle point there, if you have this selected and you just highlight over it, and when, whenever I say highlight over it, that just means don't click. It just means put your cursor over top of it. You'll get a little menu there, and you can do convert to arc. So now we can have like a little arc here. Okay, so you can make it as arcy as you want. Um, and then I'm going to go over this one and I'm going to do the opposite, convert to arc, and I'm going to go back this way. So I'm just creating this path because, you know, if you remember, we were going to do path array, and then I'm going to click this shape and hit enter, and then it's going to say, hey, what is the path curve? What do you want to put it along? Well, I wanted to put it along this shape, right? And that's pretty much it. How many items, you know, what's the space in between, blah, blah, blah. All right, so you hit close. You could even uh, probably take this and, I don't know, I've never tried this, but erase it and all the other stuff stays. Wow, pretty cool. <laughs> all right, so let's erase that stuff. Um, let's go back to our original box here and let's talk about some other things. Um, we're going to end this on two more things. How long is this video? 14 minutes. That's not shabby at all. Um, let's do fillet and chamfer. Okay, so fillet is for rounding corners and chamfer is for putting um, like a chamfer or like an, uh, like an angle on the actual corners themselves. So we've got four corners of this box. I want to fill it two of them and I want to chamfer two of the other ones. So fill it. You have to make sure that you always hit radius down here and tell it what radius you want to go. So we've got a 10 by 7 box. Why don't we do a radius of two? And then basically it's just what do you want to fill it from and what do you want to fill it to? So I want to fill it from here to here. 
Now you'll notice it boots me out of that tool. So if I hit spacebar, it brings me right back in, and it already has those settings ready to go. One, two. Although, if you know you're going to do a lot of them, go ahead and hit multiple. And as you're doing that, it'll stay in the tool, and you can just keep going around and doing your fillets. So I'm going to go all the way around here, and then I'm going to hit escape to get out of that tool, and now I'm just going to hit control Z, and you'll notice that all three of those go back. So if you're going to you know, go around and undo something, it's going to undo all of them, so just be careful. Um, so be careful with your fillets. Uh, let's go back and fill it again. Let's do a different radius. Let's do one, and we're just going to do this corner at a fillet radius one. Okay. So now it's going to chamfer. Very simple. Chamfer, uh, very similar, but a little different. you got to hit distance. What distance is, is basically it's going to say what's what's the first distance, and then once I put that in, it's going to say what's the second distance. It wants to know that, let's say I click, you know, just like fill it, I clicked one, two. Well, if I click one, two, that's how far it's going to go from this corner and measure back before it starts the angle. And the second distance is from this point how far it goes this way before it closes it. So let's just say I did a simple one like one, and then second distance would be one. These are all inches, by the way. You know, you could, here, let's just prove it. Go into units, and you'll see that the insertion scale, that's just like a common, you just go into units. Um, right now it's decimal, you know, but that basically just means you can type one, two, three, you can type 1.25, you can also do one minus, yeah, that, that's a good thing to cover, let's do that real quick. Right here, you know, if I did one, obviously, okay? But if I go this way and I did um, one over two, okay, that could be one half, or I could go, 0.5. Okay, so you could do it three different ways. Uh, mixed numbers, you could go one and one half, or you could go 1.5. So either way you like it, it's fine with me. All right, looks good for my house. Um, where were we? Chamfer. Okay, go back to chamfer. Let's do distance. Let's do one, and let's do one. So now we're gonna click one, two, and like I said, it measured from this corner. Distance one was one inch. Distance two was one inch, and that's why it looks like a 45 degree angle. You could also do chamfer. You could do the angle, okay? Tell it that you want a specific degree. I usually always do distance. I don't know why, it's just the things that we do in class, I think. Um, so, distance again. Let's do five and one. Now, a lot of times you're like, well, wait, which one is it gonna go to? Which way is it gonna go? Well, if I click this one first, that's the one that it's gonna measure five. And then if I click this one next, it'll go one that way. So I want it to go five this way before it goes one. So I'm going to click this side first, then that side. And that's pretty much it. That's chamfer. That's fillet. Um, we did mirror. We did scale. We did stretch. We talked about a couple moves and copies. We did all a bunch of stuff. Okay. So if you ended up with something similar to this, whatever this is, maybe it's like, uh, I don't know, Wally's friend or something, like a little robot. I'm not really sure. He's got like a missing ear, though. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much correct. So nice job. Uh, give yourself an A+. Um, in the next video, I guess we'll probably talk about like some text. Oh, we didn't do offset. Oh, my God. We got to do offset real quick. Okay, so offset is basically just I'm going to highlight over this, and you can do this anytime. That is an awful explanation of offset. Okay, so don't even do that. It's just going to upset you. See how this is one shape here? If I do offset and I do one as my distance, it'll just offset the entire shape by one and make it one inch bigger. Or if I go inside with my cursor, it'll go one inch smaller. Boom, done, offset. So listen, guys, I appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, JMCAD Design. Follow along. This is what we do in my class with my students. And if you're one of my students and you see something like that, you just got yourself an A+. Nice job. I'll see you guys later. Peace.